Um, for a while now, for the last couple of weeks, let me just say it like that, <clears throat> I had this whole thing planned out and the Most High shifted me because I kept hearing the word preparation. I couldn't stop hearing it. Everywhere I went, sitting at red lights, I keep hearing prepare, prepare, preparation. I was sitting getting my treatment on the other day and waiting there. And even when I got there, I still heard preparation. And the Most High is showing me more and more that the body of Christ is not prepared for his return. We're not. And he keeps giving us signs that he's coming back. And more and more people think it's a joke. Uh, we're even having children who are straying away uh, from the teaching and they're going to all types of other things. Mm -hmm. um, the spiritual journey. And the, um, I'm spiritual too. And when I meet people say I'm not religious, I'm spiritual. And then they tell me their religion or their spirit is in that crystal that they're wearing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, be careful of all of these things that are going on in what's called the new age. That's a new age teaching uh, that people are now worshiping crystals. And it takes me back to Martin when they call rock, Martin the rock. So uh, Hollywood is very strategic of how they do um, things. And then it's time for the body of Christ to really understand that. Uh, one of the reasons is a lot of times we don't even know what things are. Holly wood. Wood is made from a holly tree. Holly wood is magical. Wands are made of Hollywood. Magical. And you see these uh, people doing magicians and stuff is made from holly wood. So you got to be mindful of what's going on in the world. Uh, the world is setting things up and the church, believe it or not, is more gravitating to the world opposed to the world gravitating to the church. And we've got to re return this thing. But I'm going to show you something that he given me. I'm going to start this series on preparation. I'm going to take a pause next Sunday, but we'll come back to it first Sunday in September. But whenever we come back to it, I'm sticking with preparation for a while because I want to get you ready. But in this part one of this, the first one is reveal to be healed. Reveal to be healed. Go to Psalms 51. I'm going to talk about my brother David. Psalms 51, there are 19 verses. We're going to deal with the first 10 today, first 12 rather. And then I'll come back and walk out the rest later. But look at verse 10. Let's start with verse 10. Psalms 51, starting at verse 10. And of course, I'll go back up and we'll walk out the text. In our NIV Bible, he says, Create in me a pure heart. It's the text saying a clean heart. O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Reveal and heal. One of the hardest things I feel to do in this entire world is start over. Especially when you feel that there's no need or you've accomplished so much in life. An investigation investigation of why do we need to start over. Imagine having a business for 25 years or more and suddenly everything you've worked so hard for is lost in a matter of seconds due to a fire. Or your marriage for 35 years suddenly is infiltrated by the enemy and now you find yourself on the verge of being divorced. Now imagine being chosen by the Most High as his anointed one, and you allow your flesh to get the best of you that you sleep with a married person, and then <laughs> order the husband to be placed on the front line to be killed. It takes a special person to reveal your sins to reset yourself. Say that one more time. It takes a special person to reveal your sins and reset yourself. Mm -hmm. The word repent simply comes from the word meta, Noah, which means a change of your mind. So when we reset, we should not take the old mindset into the new journey. We should not take that old mindset to the new journey. 
here comes a key for those of you who are note takers. Right there on renovation, renewal, and reset requires new thinking. Renovation, renewal, and reset requires new thinking. Has any of your sins caused you to realize that you need renovation in your life? Have any of your sins caused you to realize that you need a renewal and a reset? Psalms 51 stands as a paradigm of prayers for forgiveness of sins. It's actually a subscription and inscribes the occasions that David sins of adultery with Bathsheba. Now, after believers sins, you've got to realize that they must obtain forgiveness for our sins. Must obtain forgiveness. This message actually gives us numerous of things. David uses three verbs, and they're figurative verbs. First, he says, blot out. Blot out implies a comparison with human records that causes us to be erased. Go up to verse number one in Psalms 51. He says, have mercy on me, O God. According to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Verse 2, he says, wash away all my iniquities. Wash away all my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. For I know my transgressions and my sins is always before me. Wash away. Forgiveness with the washing of clothing. Cleanse is to draw from the liturgical ceremony and the law in which one might be purified for temple participation. Now where I want to go is today is to teach you a little bit about this because there are three words here that we hear a lot. Sin, transgression, and iniquity. And we hear those synonymously a lot and sometimes we don't fathom what they're talking about. And it's important that we know that because in this preparation, I am truly convinced, not just this church, but the body of Christ as a whole, we aren't prepared for the returning of the Messiah. Because so many of us have not taken off our mask and revealed so we can be healed. That's good. We're not revealing the sins that are keeping us from having, notice what the word I'm about to use, a close relationship with the Most High. He desires a relationship, not a religion. Religion is separating us from our relationship. I've told you this before and I say it again. The only way to worship Yahshua is in spirit and in truth. He never requires us to worship him in a particular religion. He wants us to be spirit. First of all, you are a spirit. You are a spirit. Let me say that one more time. You are a spirit yes. that is housed in a physical body. When you leave this earth, two things goes away, your soul and your spirit. They go away. This body in which we are housed in goes back to where it came from. It crumbles and goes back into the earth, to the ground. I'm going to say this one more time, and I can only preach and teach to Calvary. It is time for you to reveal and heal. There are so many of you who are walking around with hurt. You're not just hurting yourself, you're hurting others, and ultimately, you're hurting the Most High. Because you have not totally revealed, God, this is what's keeping me from having this relationship with you. I saw it even as our men and I had a conversation on Wednesday that many times our churches have deviated from talking about holiness and hell. I'm here to tell every last one of you, I have never shared my testimony with nobody. But on the day that I thought I was going to leave here, that was a fight for my soul. See, a lot of y'all have not been there yet. A, literally a fight for my soul. I saw myself going to hell. But there's a war for me saying you can't have him. Because the enemy wanted to throw up at God some things I've done in my past. And then literally there was a war. I'm getting chills. I think I've shared this with my wife. But I'm getting chills. There was a war for my soul. I saw myself spiraling, going down to the pits of hell. 
But suddenly there was somebody who said, no, he can't go here. The door slammed immediately. And then the enemy started throwing up every single thing. Ladies and gentlemen, from all the way back to a kid, I witnessed everything I've ever done fly before my face. I don't know if any of you have ever had that kind of reaction. Everything I've ever done flew by me. Everything. When I say everything, everything. But suddenly there was an angel that said, no, he cannot go here. This is not for him. There's a better place for him. He has given his life to Yahweh. He has sold his soul to the Most High. He has not sold his soul to you, Satan. But there's a war for my soul saying he can't go here. And I felt a lifting up of my soul, but I witnessed the war for my soul. Mm -hmm. If the sin nature is left unchecked, please hear this. Continual sin leads to a reprobated mind. Mm -hmm. If your sin is left unchecked, you end up transferring over to a reprobated mind talked about in Romans Chapter 1, verse number 24. Our sin nature causes us to gravitate naturally toward being selfish, envious, pride, even when we are trying to do good. Your sin nature causes you to gravitate to these things. The Apostle Paul alluded to in his propensity to sin when he wrote, For I know that God, that good itself, does not dwell in me. Let me say that again. This is Romans chapter 7, verse number 18. He said, For I know that the good itself does not dwell in me. That is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. See, some of you ain't at that place yet. Everybody wants to think they're holier than now. Everybody want to say, I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized. You put this front on in front of people, but God said, I know you. I know the real you. I know what you say behind closed doors. I know what you're doing behind closed doors. I know the sin that you're still hiding from people, but I know what it is. He said, reveal and be healed. Sin nature leads to trespassing. Trespassers is someone who crosses a line or climbs a fence that he should not cross or climb. A trespass may be initial, intentional, I'm sorry, or unintentional. You know how we say forgive us for the sins that we know and the sins that we don't know. So some of our trespasses are intentional and unintentional. There are many of you who are intentional sinners. And I'm not talking about just any of you. I'm not throwing stones. I don't do that. But it's time for you to evaluate yourself. Are you an intentional sinner? Or are you a sinner that I do it and don't even know I'm sinning? That's the place that reveals you to be healed. God, what are my shortcomings? And God said, you know your shortcomings. Why are you asking me? You know what you're short of doing. There's nobody in this church perfect. There's no one who will go back and watch this later YouTube. You're perfect. Nobody is perfect but the Father. Now here is where I put a curveball in my pitching. You as a believer should strive for perfection. You should want to continue to, to live in the filth that so many of us wallow in every day. There should be a place that you say, I am not perfect, but I'm trying to live yes. a perfect life connected to the Messiah. Wait a minute, overseer. You can't be perfect. You can perfect some things. You can perfect some places. I don't go where I used to go. I don't do what I used to do. Then you perfected some things. But if you're a person that is not working on your soul salvation, then you're practicing sinning. Practice made perfect, right? right. The more you practice at something, the better you become at it. And there are people who are literally practicing being sinners, who go to church every Sunday, but you're still practicing being a sinner because we're not preparing. We're not revealing to be healed. We don't realize that your body needs renovation. You don't realize that your body needs restoring. You don't realize that even as a believer, you got to reset yourself every now and then because you're awaited with the things of this world. When the problems of this world weigh you down, it's just like the weight of a building. If no one ever did anything to this building, it will start dilapidating, start caving in, start looking like nobody is inside the building. Is that where a lot of us are? That the spirit is inside of us, but nobody knows it? 
because we are taking care of the very thing that have our being and move inside of us. If you don't take care of yourself, there are signs of wear and tear. It's just like a car. If you don't take care of a car and take care of when you first hear the problem, that little problem becomes a big problem. What are you saying, overseer? What you thought was a little sin will become a big sin. Wait a minute, overseer. They're not categories. No, but that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is what once was so small that you can contain it. Now it's gotten to the place that nobody sees it. Now everybody is seeing it. Why? Because you've gotten comfortable in what was a small thing. Now it has magnified itself. David was a prime example. David was a man out of God's own heart. Let me say that one more time. David was a man out of God's own heart. And if God can allow the enemy to touch David, who are you? Amen. <laughs> David was God's chosen. David, get deeper with him over here. David, in Hebrew, means 42. Where did Jesus come through? 42 what? Holla at you, boy! So when he came through. That's why he had to come through the lineage of David. Because of what his name meant, he had to come through that lineage. So if Yahshua had to come through David's lineage, David sinned. Oh, my God. David said, oh, Lord, created me a clean heart. Renew the spirit, the right spirit in me. Why? Because David allowed his lust of his eyes to get the best of him. <laughs> David saw Bathsheba. This is a whole other people Bible study lesson. I'll get into it later. But he saw Bathsheba. It wasn't unusual for a woman to be bathing on the roof. That was typical in that day and time. But just so happened, David was out on his roof. That's a whole nother teaching. And here it is. His eyes should be focused on something else. And he's looking at this woman. He didn't get one look. He stared at her and said, oh, my God. He said, what Bernie Mac said, the Lord is my shepherd and he know what I want. That's where a lot of us get to. We allow our sins to pull us in and gravitate us and pull us more and more into the thing in which we should be saying, no, I don't want that. Mm -hmm. Temptation is not a sin. To give into it, it is. One other thing that the Lord has been showing me, a lot of times it's not the temptation is when you become bored. The enemy loves when you're bored because he dangles things in front of the bored people because he want to entertain you. Because he knows a lot of us like entertainment, so you're bored? I got you. I'm going to present something to you that will cause you to fall away from what you say you believe in. I'm going to now cause you to fall into deeper into sin, reveal and be healed. Peter tells us, he says, watch this, please hear this good. A trespass, we talked about that trespass, can also mean to fall away after being close beside. That's what Peter did. You can fall away from having a relationship. They asked Peter, do you know it? No, I don't know it, but Peter had a close relationship with Yeshua. See, a lot of times you can have a close relationship, and then the enemy will come in and cause you to lose that relationship. What you once were so grounded in doing that once was a habit to you now it's become a habit not to do it you once was a praying person now you have a habit of not praying you once was a person who was heavy in your word now you got to be forced to read the word you once was a person who fasts now you wait till a special time to fast but if the scripture says some things come by fasting and praying, why are you waiting to a certain season to pray? If the enemy is in your life, you need to be fasting and praying that God would take the hands of the enemies yeah. off of you. Yeah. Because if he permitted it, that's what the simple Christians can't understand and fathom that the most high permits him to come into your life. He says, I create the greatest storms for my strongest believers. Yeah. And if my strongest believers don't realize, it's not about the storm, it's how you respond to the storm. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Your response is very, very critical. How you respond to your situation that you're in. Your response. Your response begins to draw other things to you. If you respond hastily, you will draw hastily things to you. If you respond angry, you will draw angry things to you. Your response is very critical. That's good. That's good. How you respond to your storm, to your situation. Peter trespassed when he denied. Yahshua. Every person in this church crossed the line at some time. Every person in this church from the top of the pulpit to the back of the door, we all cross the line at some point or another in our lives. And our attitude many times a day should be quick to forgive others who do the same. But we find ourselves wanting forgiveness, but we don't give forgiveness. 
I'm borrowing a preacher. I can't think of his name, but he married Shaquille O'Neal's ex-wife. He said, it's amazing how you want grace from the pulpit, but nobody wants to give grace to the pulpit in this quote. You want grace when you got five different baby daddies, but the preacher has slipped and got drunk because he gets depressed too. He goes through things too, but you don't want to give him any grace. You want to stone him and say, get out of the pulpit, but you're still on the praise team. You're still on the keyboard. You're still doing this. You're still doing that. You want the grace, but you won't give the grace. Yes, he holds us to a higher standard, but the enemy attacks us even greater than he ever will attack you. Why? Because we're on an assignment. Yeah. And the enemy has to take away the, I cannot let that assignment go out. Yeah. So I got to attack the one who is close to the most high to give his word. I'm going to hit them. I'm going to attack their bodies. I'm going to attack their mind. Why? Because many of us as preachers don't have people to cover us, but we covering you. We're praying for you, but when was the last time you pulled a preacher to himself and said, can I pray for you? But you want the prayer. You want the grace. You want the mercy, but you won't cover your preacher in grace and mercy. You won't cover your preacher and say, God, be with him, because I know it's hard walking this life, because a magnifying glass is on the one who's spreading the good news. Ooh, let's talk about this transgression. Write this down. We're going to break this stuff down so you'll know. <clears throat> what are transgressions? Transgression refers to presumptuous sins. Transgression refers to presumptuous sins. To transgress is to choose to initially disobey. Transgression is to choose to intentionally disobey. Transgression is to choose to intentionally mm -hmm. disobey. Say that one more time, overseer. Transgression is to choose to intentionally disobey. Transgression is a willful trespassing. You, you know what you're doing. You're doing it on purpose. Oh, God. That's why I say forgive us our what? Trespasses. As we forgive those who what? Trespass against us. You got to say forgive me for crossing the line. And forgive those who cross the line over here too. See, a lot of Christians don't even know boundaries. That's a whole other teaching. I'll come with that in my preparation. <clears throat> a lot of you Christians don't know about boundaries. You forgive, but you still let them cross the line. The world. I'm going to teach that later. Y'all going to be a teaching church. You're going to know. It ain't going to be nobody's fault but yours when you slip and fall. Because you're going to know. That blood going to be off my hand. Because what we're finding is, more of you forgiven... But you're still letting the person you forgive still keep hurting you. Still keep coming across your line. Because some of us are just becoming weak Christians. Because we just we go by what the older saints say. Baby, you got to forgive and forget. Baby, you got to love. Yes, I got to love you. But I got a line too. Don't cross my line. I'm going to teach y'all. You're going to know and learn on this preparation. Because I'm tired of seeing Christians crying around here. And I said, why are you crying? Because so-and-so hurt me. Did he hurt you before? Yeah. What the world? Well, mama talked. Mama, baby. God bless mama. God bless the older people. But baby, they only did what they knew. This is a, this is a thing now that cell phones have upgraded. Why are you still in, in the doggone 3G when it's 6, 7G now? I ain't got no 5G. It's still 4G on him. But, 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 but. Some of us are still operating in an antiquated mindset. Antiquated, old, outdone. You still on that old computer where it was green lines. It's an upgraded. Yes, I am the Lord thy God and I change it not. But there's a greater power. God said, I don't change, but I equip you to change. Thank you. I'm already on cloud 10. You need to be trying to get to where I am. And if you're still operating in an antiquated system, and that's what's happening. We're having a lot of people who are believers still operating in antiquated mindsets. God said, why do you, keep, why do you think I keep saying you got to do what's in the mind? Renew it. Refresh it over and over and over again. <clears throat> Transgression again is to choose to intentionally disobey. Samson intentionally broke his Nazarite vow by touching a dead lion. See, Nazarite was forbidden to touch anything dead. They knew their vows. Matter of fact, our own Yeshua was a 
Nazarite. So if everybody ever tell you, say, say why, why did he cut his hair? He was a Nazarite. He couldn't. It was a part of his vow. Nazarites are forbidden to drink alcohol. They can't do it. So that's why when they tried to give him some strong degree, he touched his head. That's why when he turned the water to wine, he didn't participate, but I gave it to you. Wait a minute, overseer. What, 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 was Yahshua making me sin? No, that's the problem with a lot of Christians. They don't understand the word wine in the Greek means onios, fermented. The longer it sits, the stronger it gets. And in the word Greek, wine means happiness. He gave them back what they lost, what they were losing. That's why the king said, wait a minute, you say the best for last? Yeah, because you lost it up front, but I'm going to give it to you on the tail end. Why? Because your lease shall be greater. Oh, God, I felt yeah. that one. <laughs> Some of you have lost your happiness. Some of you have lost your joy. He said, but I'm going to give it back to you. It's not a sin to drink, simple Christians. It's a sin to get drunk. Oh, Lord. I felt something there. Go to Deuteronomy. Let me be obedient to the Spirit. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 18. Let me show y'all something. Because as believers, we point the finger at so many people we call, oh, I hear you, Holy Spirit. He said, we call so many things an abomination. He said, but overseer, will you go to them and show them what's an abomination? Because we point to what? If, if we ask them in this church today a non-rhetorical question, an abomination, what we all go to, say it with me, homosexuality. Do we not? Do we not go to it? Let me help the Christians out today. I ain't defending the L, B, G, I can't even say all the alphabets, L, B, G, T, Q, I, A, plus. Not defending them. What I am defending is God. Because God does not uphold no sin. Let me holler at some of these Christians who participate in Deuteronomy chapter 18, go to verse number 10. I'm still in preparation because I'm trying to prepare these Christians to stop pointing fingers at one person and point them at yourself. Yes, there are an abomination, but let me help some of you Christians out. Here we go. Y'all in Deuteronomy chapter 18. I want to make sure everybody in this book. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse number 10. I'm going to read from the King James because it actually shows the word that I want. Watch what the books say. There shall be not found among you anyone that maketh his sons or daughters to pass through the fire. Or that uses, y'all want me to read these words to y'all? Divination. Or observes in the time. That's sorcery. Or enchanting, or which to all of you people, what sign are you? You Virgo, you Leo, you Capricorn. We about to go into what? If I ask some of you now, I don't even know what season you about to go to. You will probably be able to tell me. You know more about the season that you're getting ready to go into than you know about the most high. I'm finna come down y'all rolls to y'all who read these doggone sorceries. To those of you who are wearing these crystals, beads around your neck and everything, worshiping all this crap. I'm about to holler at you. That use a divination or observe the times or you enchanters or you got people in the church who call themselves Christian witches. What the world? You ain't no done Christian witch. You work for the devil. And I'm talking to everybody. YouTube and the churches, there's no such thing as a Christian witch. Ooh, walk this thing out, overseer. Teach, teach, overseer. Are you charmers? Are you consulting with familiar spirit? You calling up the dead. You want, I ain't heard. I've been going to talk to somebody because I miss my whoever your loved one is. Baby, they dead. I know that sound harsh. They gone. I got loved ones that's gone. They gone. Let them stay gone. If they come visit you, you say the devil is alive. You better get out of here. Ooh, baby. See, y'all don't want to have these kind of talk in the church. Y'all want me to hoop and holler at y'all. He said, he say, are you consulting with familiar spirit? Or are a wizard of a, a what? Necromancer. Oh, here it comes. Verse 12, to those of you who point the fingers at my brothers and sisters who say they are not of this and they are abomination. Look at what it says. For all that do these things are what? Abomination out of to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doeth drive them out from before thee. So when you want to talk to my brothers and sisters who flip-flopping, if you're doing this too, you're an abomination too. Am I teaching in this church? What's your sign? Abomination. <laughs> but when the stars line up, abomination. Well, we're going to play with the omen board, abomination. <laughs> you teaching your children, skip it, bop it, boop it, boop, abomination. <laughs> Y'all okay with this teaching? Amen. Buy some ticket to see some magic, abomination. 
Even people who prophesy, it's a thin line in prophesying and crossing over the witchcraft. It's a thin line. Accident and prophet is a thin line. Let's get back to the teaching that I'm teaching all. I'm teaching today. I'm going to prepare this body of Christ. You come to this church, you're going to have no excuse because the blood going to be off of this overseer hand. You're going to be learned today. Stop calling everything an abomination. You still got some things you need to be working on. You looking up. Half of y'all in here probably look up your sign daily. Let me see what my sign say. Mm-hmm. That's why. Mm-hmm. Sure is good. You know, the stars and the moons ain't lined up yet. Abomination. You single? God, what was your sign? Abomination. I'm trying to help the church. To these young folks in here, when you're dealing with signs and sorceries, you are an abomination before the Lord. How are you going to call your friends who are in the homosexualities an abomination when you're dabbling in the same things too? You are an abomination. An abomination is a big word just means you are a disgrace to the Lord. Ooh, God, now as you teaching, I'm trying my best. I'm a teaching preacher. You're going to learn today. Transgression. What did I tell you transgression mean? You're intentionally disobeying. Let's go to iniquities. I got to close this thing up. Iniquities. Let's go to iniquities. He talked about all of those sins, transgression, and iniquities. Iniquity is more deeply rooted. Iniquity refers to a premeditated choice. Hold up. Hold up. We're going to learn today. One was you intentionally did it. Now this one here is a... How are we talking? It's a what kind of sin? You would have thought about it. Woo! Jesus, you would have sat around and plotted how you're going to do this. You done called Tyrone. You done premeditated it. You done called Tyquisha. You done premeditated it. Premeditated choice to commit iniquity is to continue without repentance. Teach over sin. Iniquity is to continue without repentance. Iniquity is to do what? Continue without repentance. Now bag it up. It's a teaching church. What's the transgression? You intentionally. You intentionally. Disobey. Woo! But iniquity, you'd have, you'd have thought about that thing. You'd have plotted it all up. You'd have got a plan how you're going to do it. Woo! Teach nettles. David sinned with Bathsheba that led to killing her husband. Then Uriah was iniquity. He premeditated that thing. Woo. I'm going to get you, Bathsheba. Girl, you fine. Woo. Hey, 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 go call her. What about, why, why Bathsheba didn't say no? She wasn't going to resist the king's authority. She wasn't going to say no to the king. So she came. When she came, she laid with him. Oh, this thing deep, y'all. Mm-hmm. And now she laid with him. David said it was so good we're teaching in this church. Oh, let's bring a uh, hub and bring a hub in here. He and what bring him him. <laughs> Put a hub and not on the back line. Put him on the front line. Why? Because I wanted wife so bad I got to move him out of the way. Oh, God, what have you destroyed and trying to move out of the way so that you can have total access to it? Oh, God. Some of that totally... Cross the lines. Ooh, a lot of y'all have destroyed a lot of folks because you want it for yourself. Ooh. Ooh, didn't I tell you sin to cause you to be what? Selfish? Mm-hmm. Didn't I tell you sin to call you to live in pride? Didn't I tell you sin will cause you to end that? Mm-hmm. Teaching here now, I'm trying my best, man. I, I can't leave here until I get this off my chest, nephew. You hear me? I'm going to teach, man. You ain't going to get me 48. God going to say, that man taught y'all. Now it's your fault. He sinned with Bathsheba. He plotted it up. Micah 2 and 1. Write this down. Micah 2 and 1. That's M-I-C-A-H. 2 and 1 says, Woe to those who plan iniquity. To those who plot evil on their beds. At the morning's light, they carry it out because it is in their power to do it. End quote. Did y'all hear the book say the book told you, what are you who plan iniquity? You sitting up plotting how you going to do this sin. How you going to get away with it. You think nobody else knows it. Even when you think nobody else knows it, guess who knows it? The most high know what you're doing, baby. He know what you're doing. And David saw my repentance. He cries out to the Lord saying, wash away all my iniquities. Cleanse me from my sin. God forgives iniquities. As he does any type of sin. Here we go. When we repent. You 
ready for this? However, iniquity left unchecked leads to a state of willful sinning with no fear of God, no fear of the consequences. They build up an unrepentant sin. Some of us build up an unrepentant sin. It's sometimes the picture of a cup of iniquity. Oh, teach over sin. God said, what did you say, Yahshua? Let this cup pass from me because he became our sin. He became our iniquity. If it's thy will, let this cup, cup, why? The cup represented iniquity. Am I teaching y'all in here? Why did he say the cup? Because the cup was filled with iniquities. Sin. God, I don't want that cup. Mm -mm. Let that cup pass for me, Father. But then Paul said, but if it be thy will back it up, nevertheless. We ain't no nevertheless people, though. That's why you got to depend on his blood, his covering. That's why you got to say, forgive me. Don't go to sleep at night with time telling the most how to forgive you. Don't think you ain't sinned. Some of y'all sinned in your thoughts. You thought about Doing something to somebody. Premeditated. That's called a what? Iniquity. Some of just sin willfully to your porn watchers. You just sin willfully. That's a what? Trespass. Teach them. Teach them the difference over sin. Over sin said sin to watch porn. You got doggone right it is. Because you imagining yourself doing what those folk doing. It's a show. You're entertaining yourself. You all on your phone, porn hub, everything, porn, 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 naked stuff. I'm married, and when they come on TV, the first lady there, I fan forward. Don't put that spirit in my house. Amen. We both do it. Watching some shows. I don't care. Who teach over here? I don't care if it's heterosexuals. Fan forward. Show enough if it's two women. Fan forward. Show enough if it's two men. Fan forward. But I know some of you men like that. Holler at them over here. They want to see the two women. Abomination. I don't want to talk in this church because you want to see it and look at an abomination. Why? How does sin enter? Through the portals of your eyes. Then you're trying to make your spouse do all these things. You the saw on TV. When they do it, Paul, you've been watching something. What you doing? What you looking at late in the midnight hour? What you looking at? Pause them. He said it become ungodly. Oh, teach over sin. It's becoming ungodly now. Dingleberries, y'all who grown follow me. That's the new thing now, dingleberries. That's a place that nobody should go. Mm -hmm. Melissa looking like, what is a dingleberry? Look it up, I got children in here, look it up. Dingleberry, that's what everybody now wants, some dingleberries. Uh-huh. All I'm gonna tell you, it's a place where you defecate from. That's an exit, not an entrance. Teaching this place over here. Somebody want to go on an exit? An exit is an exit. If they're going your exit, they're going somebody else's exit who look like them. Amen. Teaching this church over here. Amen. Amen. You know, I know y'all here looking like you're nasty. Some people like exits, but if you go on your exit, an exit is an exit. Mm -hmm. Teaching here over here, truffle butter. Look it up. I'm teaching because these young people know about this stuff, and you parents are ignorant to it. Am I teaching in here? Y'all okay with that nurse? I'm teaching in this church. This is a teaching church. You're going to learn in this church. You as a parent won't be ignorant. As a grandma won't be ignorant. They singing some truffle butter. Look it up. They ain't talking about no candy. Mm-mm, baby. They talking about some nasty. I worked in surgery. You can't put the dirty in the clean. Holla in this church. Now those, you contaminated it. My table is clean. You just, ha ha, you go in the surgery room. What them dog on scrub this and we be on it. Oh, no, don't you come close to my table. I feel you, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost ain't teaching your clothes. <clears throat> if you're that ain't no about that at a work job, you should be that ain't no about your spirit. Yeah. Let that marinate in some of y'all spirits. If you're that ain't no to protect yourself, <laughs> from the germ, be that anal, protect yourself from the other spirits that want to come in and contaminate your spirit man. Be that anal. I don't want none of that. They'll stay away. Over here's a clean table. Oh, break it down over here. Come over here where the what? Table is spread. And the what? Feast of the Lord is what? Going on. This ain't no contaminated table. Because when you come over on this table, you're going to get sterilized. 
Oh, God. You can come dirty. Holler at your boy. He say, come as you are. I want you dirty because over here I'm going to clean you up. Check your sins, guys. Sins left unchecked leads to a reprobated mind. The word of God for the people of God. Amen.